Dub Nation. Welcome into Warriors Today by Chat Sports. You got Allie Barefoot here. And if you guys are loyal subscribers of Warriors Today, you've seen a lot of the recent videos talking about, is this superstar coming to the Warriors? Are these top trade targets for the Warriors? But I really wanted to focus in on what the Warriors could possibly afford this offseason without having to reconstruct their entire roster. That's right, baby. We're talking about top free agent targets for the Warriors to possibly go after here this NBA offseason. But I did want to go ahead and remind Warriors fans about what the Warriors salary and payroll is looking like heading into the 2024-25 NBA regular season. Joe Lakeup and Mike Dunleavy haven't specifically said what their offseason plans are yet, other than the fact that they want to make moves. I'm just going to go ahead and say, give a hunch that they're going to make moves to surround Steph Curry. But with that being said, they do also want to shed some salaries and make sure they're not extremely over that salary tax line, salary tax apron, and all of that stuff this upcoming season. So saving some money, but getting some resources are on the forefront of the GM's mind. So with that being said, I want you guys to go on ahead and be Dunleavy, be Lake up. Let me guys know. Excuse, whoa. Let me know. A player you want the Warriors to pick up into free agency. There are several NBA free agents happening this offseason. Name a player that you guys want to see. I've got four top targets that address four different positions that the Warriors could use in this upcoming season. Number one, we're going to start it off with a big man. You guys have been saying this all year long. The Warriors need a big man. Finally, Steve Kerr said, hey, guys, we could use some size. How about six foot ten, Mason Plumley. As you guys know, the Duke grad has been around several teams in his last 10 years in the NBA, but he's still a pretty good solid role player here for the depth chart when it comes to adding a center. 5.3 points per game. I love the five boards per game as well. Not nearly as many blocks, not even close to as many blocks as Trace Jackson Davis, but he does shoot 60% from the field. He only played 45 games, though, for the Clippers this past season. So when you're looking at Plumlee, you got to take into factor there have been some injuries. But the reason why I like Plummy the best is that you're just going to get a veteran to bring in alongside the rookie. This does not mean you have to get rid of Trace Jackson Davis. This actually just provides a little bit more cushion around allowing TJD to grow, and he makes an immediate impact in the paint. He does well when it comes to lob finishers. He does well scoring around the rim. So if you need TJD to really get more reps and really have that next season develop, I think a veteran like Mason Plumley. Might as well. He's under $10 million a year, and I think he has been around several teams in the NBA that he understands what it's like to come into a new organization and have a new role. So with that being said, that's just one free agent target I want to touch on. I got three more for you. But before I get into any of those, I just feel guilty. I can't go any further without telling you guys about this amazing, amazing daily fantasy sports app, Prize Fix. They are a sponsor here at Warriors Today by Chat Sports with myself, producer Smitty. We've been playing Prize Fix a long before they came a sponsor. I have won over 15 entries. I've won over $500. I promise. Playing Prize Fix. I never used to put money down on games. It never made sense to me. But now when I have Prize Fix, it's so aesthetically easy to play. And I love the range of categories and picks that they have. For you guys to choose from. So you can mix and match WNBA, NBA, MLB, NHL. You got League of Legends, Call of Duty even if that's your jam. But I know the WNBA season is coming up as you guys can see. Preseason game later tonight. But that season starts on May 14th. So I'm already taking, I'm already locking in Caitlin Clark to average 3.2 three-pointers made in her rookie season. I love Caitlin Clark. I'm a huge fan. So I'm going to take that in weeks before that season even starts. But don't worry. I got some picks for tonight's game as well. Kyrie Irving to have more than five assists going up against the Los Angeles Clippers and Mason Plumlee along there as well. So with that being said, you guys can copy my prize picks or you can go ahead and make your own. Just go to prizepicks.com slash CLNS. Use that promo code C. L N S for a first time deposit match up to $100. You're going to be able to watch yourself win some real money in real time. The best part is pick more or pick less. It is truly that easy to play prize picks number one daily fantasy sports app in America. Let's talk about Nicholas Batum, the recent Philadelphia 76er who did just get knocked out of the postseason. Batum, I think, is a really good guy here on the free agent market. Obviously, he did just recently play for the Clippers, and then after that two-year contract was done, he shipped his way to the East Coast and played for Philly. What he did this postseason, though, because I loved, 
loved the Sixers and Knicks series. And that was a really dominant series. So what he did against a pretty good Knicks team is 6.3 points a game, six boards a game, 41% from the field, and 41% from the three-point line. Obviously, he's got some offensive skill sets that could really complement the Golden State Warriors. When it comes to defense, I mean, he's got a defensive rating of like 112, which is kind of subpar there along with a lot of other NBA players. But we do know that Batum will be playing in the 2024 Olympics this summer, or actually playing for his country. He'll be playing for France, and he'll be able to go up against a lot of NBA players that he could possibly be playing with. He'll be going up against his former teammate, Joel Embiid. And we're not sure that Joel Embiid and the 76ers would be willing to pay him what they need because considering the fact the 76ers have probably the most money to spend this offseason, the most draft picks to accumulate, they might not need a player like Batum, which is why I do think when you have an unrestricted free agent like a player that just played in the postseason, it could be worth picking up, especially when you see that four depth chart that the Warriors do have going on here. So Draymond Green has been playing the four towards the end of the Warriors' regular season because TJD was playing the five. I love that. Keep doing that. But Jonathan Kaminga is also at that four position. Kerr wants him to be a three, but he doesn't have the offensive skill set around outside the paint for him to be a three yet. If you look at these last three players, there's no guarantee that they're all going to be on the roster's upcoming season. Wiggins has had trade rumors. Gary Payton, the, the, third, the second, has a player option. And then Dario is a free agent. I don't see Dario getting re-signed because his playing time fell off so drastically. So adding in somebody like Nicholas Batum would be a really good role player. You could put him in the starting lineup if you need to, but he could also be a really good asset coming off the bench. With that being said, is there a specific position you want the Warriors to really maximize this offseason in free agency? I got two more positions to talk about. It could be a forward, a little bit of wings. It could be another point guard, a small a shooting guard, or it could be a big man, which is probably what I'm going to see the most in the comment section below because I'm probably going to be spamming it down below myself. But let's keep talking about the wings here, shall we? And when I'm talking about the wings, I'm talking about the small forward, Malik Monk, the sixth man of the year. Monk playing for the Sacramento Kings has had plenty of experience playing the rival in California, the Golden State Warriors. Monk had a phenomenal year. 72 games played, mainly coming off the bench, hence sixth man of the year. 15 points a game. About three boards, but obviously, you know, that's not his niche. 5.1 assists per game and then 44% from a three-point line, which is phenomenal for somebody like Malik Monk. But the fact that he just won the sixth man of the year means that his value is going to skyrocket. If the Sacramento Kings do not want to bring him back, I do think he's going to have a lot of offers in free agency, and that's where the Warriors' salary and a lot of money they can offer does come into play because I do think Malik Monk could be getting a pretty good contract in this offseason. We would just have to pay more than the Sacramento Kings, and then we have to buy out anybody else that wants to get him. I was talking to producer Smitty, and look, if you don't re-sign Clay Thompson, if you do not guarantee Chris Paul's $30 million a year, you have enough money to go out and sign Malik Monk to upwards of a $110 million contract over the next four years. You could even possibly, if you'd be willing to, go as low as possibly $75 million over the next four years. I think Malik Monk has a lot to give to the Golden State Warriors because while they had so many starting lineups to choose from, having a role player off the bench would be a huge asset. And knowing he's making just under $10 million this season means he's going to be looking for more money because he now has that really high accolade under his belt of winning the sixth man of the year. But knowing it's going to take probably not being able to re-sign Klay Thompson and probably not guaranteeing Chris Paul's $30 million a year, my question here to you guys is, would you sign Malik Monk? Do you think he's worth it with what he just did with Sacramento, knowing that it still wasn't enough to push the needle to help them get to the postseason because he was not playing? In the postseason, would you sign Malik Monk? Type Y for yes, type N for no. My last option here for free agents, which of course there are several as well, is also somebody in the state of California. Did I mean to put three out of four targets in California? I did not, but welcome to the NBA. Spencer Dinwiddie. I'm looking at that point guard specifically because if they do not bring back Chris Paul, you have got to add a little bit more depth there. And I'm looking at a double-digit score 
and Spencer Dinwiddie. The rebounds, not really looking at that for a point guard, really, but the assists, I love it. 39% from the field is exactly why I love his assist ratio here. It's because, no, he may not put up the most points on, on offense, and he may not be the most efficient offensive player, but what he can do in terms of assisting is really going to complement Steph Curry here. And like I said, the Golden State Warriors would have to waive CP3 because it would contradict with the money. It also, you're just going to have too many cooks in the kitchen. And I just don't think that even Steve Kerr said this is the roster that Chris Paul should be on. And I also posted a note here that Spencer Dinwiddie, he did post, oh, excuse me. Well, I think he would be a good facilitator, facilitator here for Steph Curry. I truly do. With those assists, not that much of a score. Obviously, he's going to play more of a selfless type of basketball where he is going to be willing to set up the offense to allow Steph Curry to succeed here, which is why I do think that having another right-hand man along with Steph Curry would be probably beneficial if Steve Kerr is already like, you know what, Chris Paul, this might just not be your end destination. CP3, who's already said he's not looking at retirement, well, you don't have $30 million that's guaranteed. So he may not want to play for the Warriors next season either. With that being said, those were just four of the top free agents that could possibly fit in here with the Golden State Warriors, but there are several out there this summer. Name your top choice of a Warriors free agent agent. If there is anybody out there that is willing to sign tomorrow, go on ahead and comment that down below. Who's the player you want? Who is your top choice in Warriors free agency? Let me know down below. While you guys are at it, scroll up a little bit on your YouTube page on your phone. Hit that sub button for me when and if the Warriors do make a free agency signing. We got you right here.